I don't I don't know what that was, but now the mic is wet. As am I. Hello and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast, episode 168 for Thursday, the 5th of April, 2018. This is a show where two lifelong friends and their guests celebrate all things geek. I'm Amos, that's Kent, and screw us, we got a guest tonight. Kent, why don't you introduce the guest while I grab my headphones, because that's the one thing that I forgot tonight. Oh, amazing. Uh, well, I, I do want to point out that we started the stream on time tonight, so this, this is like a night of first. Uh, so cool. But hey, we, like you said, are not alone tonight. We have Justin Frazier, a.k.a. Bob, from the Have a Drink Show. What's going on, dude? Hey, how's it going? Uh, we asked uh, you that. Uh, well, this, yeah, no. But is this going to be I'm, one of those things where we're asking you a question, so you just ask the question back at us? Because it's going to make for a very interesting episode. <laughs> Probably. I mean, let's find out. Let's find out uh, what? Yeah, sorry. <laughs> also, was thirsty, so it led to an awkward pause. Uh, uh, we, we, we just hashtag awk every pause around here. <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. Um, okay, so uh, real quick, what's everybody drinking? I'm drinking my, uh, my Lyft Amber, also known as an Alaskan Amber. <laughs> uh, right, yeah, yeah. You're, you're kind of loyal to that Lyft brand over the last several weeks. It's, it's got a good koozie. <laughs> right. That's, that's, all it takes, right that, that's all it takes to get me to sponsor you is give me a koozie. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I'm down with the Founders All Day IPA tonight. Ooh, yes. Is that like Very an nice. anti-session then? It's uh no. It actually is quite the session. It, they developed it specifically to be sessionable. So you can you can drink these all day, as the name mm-hmm. implies. Hmm. All right. How about the, you, Bob? Uh, I've got uh some smuggled down uh New Glarus uh spotted cow. Only available in Wisconsin, and I had to find a drug mule for it. <laughs> <laughs> Bob is tipping some cows. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's only available oh. in Wisconsin and back alleys in Kentucky, apparently. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> you, have to know, you have to know a guy. Yeah, you have to know a guy that knows a guy that happens to be going that way? Pretty yeah, much. Pretty much. Mm. <laughs> well. Yeah, I, I can't say that I haven't had some cows smuggled down this way as well. Uh, <laughs> well, I, I haven't had them smuggled up here, but I've had them smuggled over to a previous house. Check, uh, <laughs> check sorry, I just look. Check the episodes in the early teens for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, a, a New Year's special, I think. Maybe. That was, Probably. Yeah. That, that would make sense. Oh, ago. Which, Holy crap. Yeah. Dude, that was forever ago. It was. it was. We've been doing this for almost four years. <laughs> yeah. That's insane, dude. Yeah. Um, like we've been doing this so long, like I feel like when I think back to that time, it feels like yesterday. So it's kind of like living in the future right now. Uh, so a weird thing to say, but okay, I get it. No, that's um, that I'm, was I'm uh, that was my attempt at an awkward transition, which <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> apparently I either I either succeeded or failed at. <laughs> how about we just go over to Bob and say, Hey, Bob, how long you been uh, podcasting? Because you're not just like a random dude off the streets here. Like we didn't just like call random numbers in Kentucky and say, Hey, can you get on Skype like right now? Like we're about, we're about to go live. <laughs> Or maybe honestly, we did. That, honestly, that could probably that work, work, though. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, no, uh, we've been doing our, our show for almost three years now. Like, October will be three, so about two and a half. Mm. Uh, that sounds right, maybe. Maybe. Uh, we're coming up, uh, around that point is our 100th episode, I know that. We just switched to doing weekly episodes, so that, that came a lot sooner than we were expecting. Uh <laughs> When, we, when are you looking at doing the the 100? Like, how far out are you? A couple months? Uh, oh yeah, no, that'll that that should land sometime in October. We're just not sure if it'll land on Oktoberfest or not. Oh, Kaiba Jojo! Uh, yeah. I, I got stories about Kaiba Jojo here in a little bit when we start going through our week. Um, Oktoberfest of 2016 is actually when I met you, Bob. Yeah, no, that was our that was our first big Oktoberfest like event ish thing, and. Kent showed up and we were like, oh. Like, I think Emily was like, brought, brought him over. I was like, who's this? This is Kent. Oh, nice to meet you. And then later I was like, he's like, oh yeah, he's Del Noche. That name sounds familiar. <laughs> Don't know uh, why. Kind of ritual misery, maybe? Um, <laughs> no, that was awesome, man. I, I didn't even know you guys had that show. And when, when M was like, yeah, we're going to go over to some cool people's house. And, uh, you know, they do a beer thing. And I was like, oh, beer thing? Yeah, hell yeah, let's go over there. And then she's like, oh, yeah, they, they podcast about beer. 
was like, get the fuck out of here. Are you kidding me right now? <laughs> it was the <laughs> like, coolest, weird, out of nowhere coincidence. I loved it. Totally serendipitous, oh, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty great. Um, okay. Yeah. So, uh, Kent, how was your week, dude? Um, uh, well, it was pretty good, except for yesterday. I, I actually I came down with a stomach bug or, or some oh. such nonsense. I woke up yesterday morning with acid reflux and just like oh. just all out of sorts. I ended up throwing up in the toilet in the morning, called off work. I was, man, I spent almost the entire day in bed. It was like having a hangover without a hangover. Like <laughs> I definitely wasn't hungover, but it was like, you know, you know, like those mornings in Korea when like a Monday morning when you're supposed to be at work in three yeah. hours, and you end up just throwing up in the, you know, all over the place. Mm-hmm. Uh, it it kind of felt like that. But uh, I, I definitely wasn't drunk or hungover. It was the weirdest, weirdest thing. I don't know. So the last day of work that I missed for being hungover uh, was in Korea. My first day that I was legally allowed to drink. It wasn't against the regs or anything else. And by the way, Time Jumper says he's drinking some Glenlivet 18. Um, so tip of the hat to you. Cause, uh, imagine that's pretty good if I could just drink some damn whiskey. If you got some, if you got some pointers on overcoming, uh, uh, Jack Daniels overdose, let me know so I can actually start enjoying some bourbon again. Um, well, well, one, we'll find you actual bourbon because <laughs> Jack Daniels isn't and two can't drink any, any kind of whiskey. There's a whole new world. We'll get you there. Any kind of whiskey. It all, it all gives me the same reaction. Um, the, uh, w- 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 I was, so you're not allowed to your your curfew is ten o'clock in your first two weeks that you're there and you're not allowed to drink. On your fourteenth day, midnight of your fourteenth day, you're allowed to go out. But curfew for everyone is one o'clock. Well, I was the guy standing at the gate, ready to walk out at midnight of my thirteenth day. So on my fourteenth day I could walk out. I had to go and I had to be back by one. Now the line starts forming up about twelve thirty, so you've re- realistically got about thirty five to forty minutes to get in line to be able to get to the gate before one o'clock. And I used all of that to my advantage. Um, and I did not make it to work the next day. I made it to the shower. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. That, is, that, that pretty much defines a Korea tour. That's kind of how it goes. Yeah. I, I remember my, my, it, my initial briefing when I first got there, the, the commander, the wing commander, the colonel, gets up on a stage and addresses everyone during in processing. And the first thing he said was, Contrary to everyone's belief, this is not a party base. He was dead serious. However, the entire auditorium erupted in laughter <laughs> to his dismay. <laughs> yeah. Um, with great power comes great responsibility not to fuck up a speech like that. Uh, <laughs> know your audience, uh, man. Know your audience. <laughs> I was unaware that Korea had the, uh, had the reputation of being a party base. Uh, uh so, Kunsan is the Arizona State of Air Force bases. Oh God. <laughs> well said. I I never heard it called that, but that's that's accurate. That's... <laughs> oh man, it's, it's, it really defines the uh, or epitomizes the work hard, play hard because you work like fourteen hours a day, damn near six days a week. Mm. So when you get that time off, you just you play pretty hard. Yeah, uh, yeah, definitely. So, yeah, what an experience! That uh, that is such a unique thing. And uh, so, so you, uh, w- what else happened during during your week other than you spending an entire day uh, uh, praying to the porcelain god for no apparent reason? <laughs> right. So, well, the day after last week's show, I received a shipment of a robot. Hmm. So I've uh, been tweaking that thing and um, and uh, making it do my bidding. Uh, what what? <laughs> well, um, mm. No, no. You only let it. You it only does your bidding until you do its. Uh, Fitz would not let me survive the episode without calling you out and asking you exactly what bidding is this robot doing you. <laughs> well, um, so th- this is kind of like an intro robot because I, I yeah I can't afford the uh, the ones that would do everything I wanted to do. Uh, no, I've been looking at the robot vacuums for quite a while, like the Roomba style mm-hmm. robots. Mm. Okay. And um, I, know, I know you spazzed out about three months ago when you found out that I had a Roomba upstairs making all kinds of noise in the kitchen. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's something I've, I've kind of gone back and forth on. And uh, I was like, you know what? I'm, I'm going to get one. So I, I researched and uh, figured out what I uh, could surmise was the best one on the market right now, uh, we, you know, without spending several thousand dollars. And uh, there was a, a new one actually just came out from Nito. It's called the D7. 
uh, or D7 Connected, I think is the full name of it. And um, uh, yeah, man, it's actually it's really nice. It uh, w- one of the cool things that it does is it will map your house. And you know how, like, with the Roomba, you have to put down, like, physical barriers to tell it, you know, don't go here. Like, put down tape or, like, these little... Um, uh, um, I, uh, I have an IR sensor, an IR wall. You just put it down on one side, and it blocks off that entrance wall. Right. Right. So, yeah. well, one of the cool things that the that the D7, the Neato D7 does, um, totally not sponsored by them, but uh, if you do want to use our Amazon <laughs> links, you know, <laughs> um, <laughs> so no, richmondmisery cool com slash support. Uh, go ahead and click on a little <laughs> banner right there and uh, buy your nine thousand dollar device. We would oh my be God. greatly appreciated. Yeah, but, but so <laughs> one of the cool things that this thing does is is it maps your house the first time that it it cleans. And you can actually put down like virtual lines in the map, like no go lines, and uh, that actually works really well. I, I I virtually roped off the the area where the dog food and water is. Nice. And, uh, yeah, it's it works really really well. Hey, uh, quick shout out Kaiba Jojo in the chat realm. Uh, he's a buddy of mine from uh, from video games. I've actually never met the dude in real life, but uh, he can play the hell out of some division. So everybody, give him a warm welcome in their chat room. Yeah, hell yeah. What's up, man? <clears throat> um, okay, so you got your robot, and uh, it vacuums for you. What else does it do? Um, uh, gets stuck on the carpet occasionally. That's, that's, that's not a feature. That's a bug. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, no, this, this thing actually it, it works really, really well. But our, the thing about our, our living room carpet is that the dogs have, uh, like when they were puppies, they would, they would pull at it. They would bite at the carpet and like pull up strings. Mm-hmm. So... Every several feet in the living room, there's these like, you know, I don't know, four or five inch long like strings of carpet. Mm. And every so often the the robot will grab onto one of those things, you know, get wrapped around the like literally wrapped around the axle. <laughs> and it's like it, I'll get a I'll get a text message on my phone or not a text, but a, a notification on my phone that says, help me. I'm stuck. <laughs> <laughs> so you, so I was going to tell you that you could, uh, you just grab some little scissors or whatever, you know, like, just, l- l- and just, and just trim, trim up those trouble spots. But, but let's face it. You just like it to get the notification that you know, you're not alone in the house that day. <laughs> it's okay. We understand. <laughs> like I, I, I get you. I've been to Korea. I've been alone for months on end. Yeah. See, yeah. I'm, I'm just I'm picturing him just robot. taking, taking Cheetos and just dumping them on the carpet and going, clean this. <laughs> uh, this is the guy that took, uh, took golf balls uh, or ping pong balls to, the, uh, to the, the, the hardware store when he bought his new toilet. So he, wanted to make sure, <laughs> he had to make sure that it would flush down the, right, the, the, you know, the proper, uh, proper size items. So I, w- I, wouldn't, I wouldn't put a basket to put a bunch of Cheetos on his carpet and, and uh, hey, Bucker, clean it up. Oh, totally. <laughs> yeah. If I can uh, lick this carpet and taste Cheeto, you're fired. <laughs> <laughs> you're going back. Uh, yeah, so I'm I'm embracing my robot future. Yeah, uh, awesome. Speaking of the future, uh, you watched Ready Player One. How was that, dude? Okay, have either of you read the book? No. Uh, yes. Have you seen the movie, Bob? I I watched it Tuesday, like just two days ago. So like I had a day off. And I was like, no. All right, so I'll I'll give you my quick review, and then I would love to hear yours as well. So I I love the book. The book is probably my f- favorite book. It is so wonderful. The movie is not the book. It's the same story as the book, but it's not the book. Like they they changed some of the. Um, so basically, there's three challenges. They changed the challenges in the movie to be something new, and I loved that. the The movie was. Fucking wonderful. That is my that is my short review. The movie is fucking wonderful. Bob. Uh, yeah, I I I really enjoyed it. The the book of the movie. There are uh, both okay. both. Uh, I I really like I really loved the book. Um, the movie. There are a couple of just minor issues that I have you know I have with it, but like not enough to really detract from it. Like I, I sat there and I watched it. I'm like. I have this uh, this weird relationship with nostalgia. On the one hand, I absolutely hate it. On the other hand, something turned into a Gundam, and I just stared at it with like, yes, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's yeah, it's great. I I have Movie Pass now, so well, you I finally think I'm got go it. Back. I did, yeah, I got it just the other day, and I think I'm going to go see this movie about forty seven more times in the theater. Hmm. 
Um, I have not seen it. I have not read it. I probably will not watch it until it comes out on video because it's on another team's movie draft. Um, so I'm not going to support <laughs> them in any way, shape or form. <laughs> and, uh, but that does mean that I'm going to go see a bunch of shitty movies. Cause we got some, we got some stinkers in our, on our slate. Um, I, you know what I did this week, man? Uh, I, I did something not quite as cool as, but just, uh, uh, just, Justin, Bob, Bobston, but dude, you got to pick a name. You're worse than I am. Now I know how everybody else feels. Um, <laughs> I, I I did something oh. not as cool as what Bob did, so I'm going to tell you mine. Then we can go to Bob because I don't want to be out, uh, overshadowed. Once he says his, mine's going to be lame. Um, that was totally supposed to be in my head, but whatever. I have been listening to podcasts about podcasting. Po- Podcasters Roundtable, uh, Ask the, the Podcast Coach, um, even went back and, and listened to some uh, Audacity to Podcast. I've been listening to podcasts about podcasting, and I, and the, the whole reason why is because I'm so far behind on my normal slate of podcasts, like 1,400 episodes behind, that I d- instead of tackling that, I just went ahead and started adding new ones and started listening to those. <laughs> it's like, look, I'm never catching up on you. I, I'm just going to find something new to love. Let's- right. At, th- at this point, I just need, there, need to be there a, enough of a gap to where I can act like I'm a new listener to the shows. And right. th- that way I don't feel bad when I don't understand the references they're going with. Um, uh, yeah, so that, that's, uh, that's, that's what I've been doing, man. And, and I got to tell you, dude, we are doing everything wrong on this show. Everything uh, we're supposed to do yeah. is not what we're doing. So like this one, this one episode, this one show had like 40 tips to grow your audience, and we are doing three of them. <laughs> and, and, and one of the ones we're doing, we're doing wrong. So... <laughs> <laughs> oh man! If you take a negative one to a one, and then that basically out of forty, we're doing one. Um, it was yeah. It's been an interesting uh, 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 life journey I've gone through this last uh, last week. Um, I, I can see that part of the charm of ritual misery. <laughs> Uh, the, the podcast isn't a bug, it's a feature. Is that what you're saying? Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, uh, I think I mentioned last week that, uh, that David had bought me Division, him, himself a copy and me a copy um, yep. while I was on Steam sale, and I went ahead and did the upgrade. Well, this weekend he was doing soccer, so I didn't have a buddy to play with. I found somebody online that, wanted to, uh, that was willing to do a, a uh, hour for hour um, a, 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 a Twink. So basically, they play. They they brought their third level thirty max level player out for like two hours and played with me and brought me up to a level thirty uh, uh, weapon level two eighty. So I owe them two hours to do that with one of their alts. It's this mm, great okay. trade. So it took me two hours. And I went from level like seventeen up to level thirty, and now I'm I'm like maxed out. I'm all at end end game stuff. So all the fun stuff, right? I tell David, hey, let's go ahead and uh, get you jacked up on here. And we got him up to like level 26, and it was time to go to bed because that's what happens when you have school age kids. And <laughs> um, yeah, it was, it is more fun. I, I've played a lot, of, I played World of Warcraft where I, I'd get a low level person and try to, you know, get them up and, and speed, you know, power uh, level them and everything else. And it was just never fun. Mm-hmm. Power leveling they- somebody in division is awesome it's maybe one of my most favorite things ever because there's always a risk of them dying they have to stay near you there's always a risk of you dying and letting them save you um but in order to save you they usually have to get too close to the action to survive themselves so they'll end up dying saving you then you have to save them again and then kill everybody it's man it's just fun and then of course uh david's oh shit shit oh 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 oh, oh. no i survived i survived oh shit i'm dead you know and it was just yeah it's, <laughs> It was just a lot of fun. So if anybody out there is playing Division and they want to be power leveled and they see me on there, Ethan Kane seventy seven is my gamer tag. Let me know because uh, that was some fun hell, fun as hell shit. My nice. uh, my co host Casey sent us sent me and uh, uh, one of my other friends a text and said, "I need you guys to get the Division. It's so good." And I'm like, yep. I mean, you texted me while I'm nowhere near a computer that I can do this on. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, if you're not playing the division and you like first person shooters at all, like in any way, shape, or form, this is this is my favorite one by far. And it's just it's really awesome. A lot of little strategies into it, especially with the gear and stuff like that. But it's got the uh if you like to rush and shoot people, it's good. 
if you like to stay back behind and snipe people, it's good. If you like that middle ground where you can, you know, kind of go between barriers and then rush and then barrier and then all that, it's good. Like it's it's just good. It's it's the best Tom Clancy game ever. Nice. Oh. So, what what kind of geekiness did you get into this week, Bob? Uh, well, I uh. I had I, I yeah, uh, Bob. a while back I spent yeah, Bob. way too much money on tickets. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, Bob, tell us tell us what you did this for, week. Tell, tell for for uh, go ahead, go ahead, for Weird Al's. Uh, hold on, I have to find the exact name of the tour. Oh oh oh, oh, oh yeah, because that matters. Because that matters, Bob. <laughs> yeah, it matters. Well, which which Weird Al tour sorry, you went my, on, Bob? Yeah, that matters. Yeah, I I, I had yeah. a hat somewhere I was going to pull out and it's gone. <laughs> no now. jealousy. Uh, no it's jealousy. The, it's the their, it's his ridiculously. Uh, self-involved this is probably a bad idea or something like that uh tour <laughs> where he only plays his original music no no parodies nice and it's in smaller little venues uh and i blew some money to get the vip package for it nice. so, so you're looking at like 100 well the tickets that i saw were like 150 180 something like that for the vip package so not a cheap uh, ticket yeah, I I bought two of them, and I'm I'd rather not say how much I spent on it, more than what you're thinking. Uh, I I, don't, I mean I spent I spent um, shit almost four hundred dollars to go see um, uh, Matt, uh, 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 shit is it Matt Bradley's uh, modern postmodern jukebox? Oh, uh, well, you gotta see his postmodern jukebox. Yeah, well, I couldn't remember that until I said Bradley, and I didn't want to just say Bradley because <laughs> the dude's name's not Bradley. Um, so I, I took uh, I took my wife and the twins to see PMJ, and it cost us nearly four hundred bucks, but it was totally worth it because that was a bad ass show. Yeah, uh, me, I, I went ahead and got tickets. Me and my roommate went. Uh, we're both big Weird Al fans, and uh, there was uh, we went there an hour before, two hours before doors opened. Because they had uh, Weird Al Jeopardy that got, that was played, mm. they picked they picked volunteers from the audience, and you know you watched them do this, which was fun. It was at least a nice little thing to pass the time. Uh, and then the actual show gets on. Uh, Emo Phillips was the comedian that kind of warmed everyone up. Nice. That was that was better than I was expecting. I was like, I haven't heard from him in a while, and I sent out a message. I was going, and a friend of mine went. Isn't he dead? He's <laughs> like, no. Well, if he is, he's he's, he's, fun, he's a funny as hell for a dead dude. <laughs> <laughs> and then then the actual show goes on. Now I found it funny because my very first uh, concert I ever went to was when I was sixteen, and it was Weird Al Yankovic. Mm. Uh, that was my birthday present my parents got me. Um, and so this was a weird experience. 14 years later uh so <laughs> you know what i got from that i got that you're really young that's what i got from that <laughs> well like only only chronologically i'm usually yelling at children to get off my lawn um but the but the show itself was was amazing i i never thought i was gonna hear uh, uh uh dare to be stupid played like a slow jazz tune uh, nor did I ever think uh, he does. He does one set of uh, parodies uh, as he does them as in a medley, and it starts out with someone putting on an acoustic guitar, and they start playing the acoustic version of Layla, which he then sings "Eat It" over. Mm. And my brain oh. came very close uh, to exploding. Um, <laughs> that's yeah, because that's not the that's. that's <laughs> good it Lord. worked. Yeah, I could. It, oh my god. <clears throat> mm. But it was just strange. Uh, so, you know, it was a it was a fantastic show. Uh, I, I used to work as a stagehand on a lighting crew, and so I have to say the lighting was fantastic. <laughs> the dumbest thing to compliment, but I'm sitting there staring, going, "Oh my god, that's good." Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, you you don't know how much lighting affects the mood of the concert until you see a concert without the lighting, and you're just like. It, it, it was all right, but someone was missing. Did, yeah. Did they swap out lead singers like halfway or something? Something <laughs> just wasn't right. <laughs> you need something to distract them when the lead singer goes off into the under into the understage uh, uh, cocaine and hookers room. Right. And- uh, oh, you, you, hey, real quick. Uh, there's a if you're into country. I know. I know. I know. I'm in, probably in the minority here listening to country music and stuff. 
Um, but I have to mention this because it's just amazing, and I know it's completely out of uh, cocaine and rhinestones. The history of country music. It is a okay. podcast. It is an NSFW podcast where this dude, I don't even remember his name, goes through these outrageous stories of how country music became country music. And it's literally all about so-and-so was too drunk to go on stage this night, so this person took over, but then that person slept with so-and-so's wife, and then she became a star. <laughs> like, it's, it's, this, it's like this audio drama of behind-the-scenes country stuff, and it's all based in like testimonials and, and historical facts and things like that. It's, it's amazing. If you're into country music at all and you're just like, yeah, I wish this was a little tangier, Cocaine and Rhinestones got you covered. I was going to so, say, like, so, that cocaine and rhinestone just sounds like, what? So they just took stories from Johnny Cash and uh, Hank's, Hank Williams Jr.? Uh, you, uh, you read yeah. my mind. That's exactly what I was about to say. Yeah, <laughs> except they explain how everybody is Hank Williams Jr. and Johnny Cash. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> it's really good, uh, though. It's, and it's really well put together. kind of reminds me of uh, 99% Invisible, but uh, like uh, in a longer format. Hmm. So... Um, yeah, okay, so there's that. And uh, uh, I'm just trying to cover up the jealousy I have that you went to see Weird Al, and I've been trying to see him for uh, almost 41 years and still haven't seen him. So, um, And then you also uh, you also read some comics this week? Uh, yeah, uh, I was, uh, due to the holiday and some other events, I was stuck uh, at my parents' for a long time. Uh, <laughs> so I, I booted up my tablet, and I was on their... Uh, really crappy Wi-Fi. Like, I could barely download one issue of a comic and watch something on Netflix at the same time. Uh, but I First world went in there and I was like, all right, it's time to time to find some, some comics from my youth that I missed. Like, not ones I had read a bunch when I was younger, but, like, ones that just I never found then. And I was like, all right, let's... So I'm just going through finding old... Uh, old weird spider-man runs i had uh ended up reading all of the 90s legion of superheroes comic because i am a colossal nerd wow that <laughs> that's not just one that's two different there there was a time when when apparently sales could support two different legion of superheroes comics <sighs> that is that's wow yeah that is heroic <laughs> Uh, good job. So it's testimonials yeah, no. like this that make me thankful I never got into comics. Like <laughs> it's, it's bad yeah. enough trying to go back and rewatch TV shows. I couldn't imagine going back and trying to reread all the old comics and and find the old comics and then uh, just. Well, uh. like the the comicsology stuff, what they have available makes it a little bit easier, but it's it's not super cheap. Like I don't want to think about how much I spent buying <laughs> buying all of those. Uh, Hope not as much as the Weird Al tickets. No, no, probably not that much. But you know what? We're just the bill kept coming in. Comicsology has this in the email, and I went, "Nope, not looking at you. You're just gonna make me sad." Yeah, and that and that's the thing. That's uh, spending money on comics is something I used to do in high school. I I can't justify the 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 cost anymore. I I still love comics, but man. Um, it is. And if only, Amos, if, if only there was a way that, that people could help us uh, with uh, buying comics and uh, uh, other geeky things, uh, what could they do? Um, well, I don't. I, I seem to remember a, a site, um, uh, pop, 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 um, Poo, Poo, uh, Poopery. Poo well, well, hold on. Is this, is this where you can send like a, a check or money order? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can send a check or money order to poopery.com. Um, uh, <laughs> and, and they will send you a log of poo, uh, the smell, the, <laughs> this, this, uh, the scented to smell like roses. And you just put that right there on your kitchen counter and, uh, everybody, everybody enjoys it. Is that what you're talking about? Cause that's what I remember. No, 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 no. Because no, cause poop, we don't get any of the money for that. We, uh, w somebody wants to send us money. Though. Oh, oh, send us. I thought you just wanted to write a check and just send it somewhere. Like. Uh, no, I need comics money. Oh, 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 okay, okay. Got, um, so you can go to uh, you can go to uh, um, uh, uh, papertears dot com, papertears, uh, papertears. No, it's paper papertears dot comic. That's what it is. Papertears dot comic, and you put put Kent in there, and it's like a drawing, and every month they'll draw a name, and eventually Kent will get some comics, and you can just write a check, and and the more and the more checks um, you write, the faster it'll, he'll get his comic. 
that that takes too long. What if what if somebody just wanted to directly contribute to the Ritual Misery podcast? Oh. How would they do that? Well, why didn't you just say so, dude? That's patreon.com slash ritual misery. <laughs> Much like, simpler. Yeah, dude. That I, I thought you were like trying to go or go around it or something like that. Like <laughs> you should have just come direct, dude. Just I don't know. I don't understand. Patreon.com slash ritual misery. Go by there if you give a fuck about the show. Give a buck to the show and uh keep this uh this this uh live internet trash fire going. <laughs> Oh yeah, they can also go to ritualmisery.com slash support, find other ways. Uh, also, if you're watching us on Twitch right now, on twitch.tv slash ritualmisery, you can hit that subscribe button, and if you are a Twitch Prime subscriber, you can give us $2.49 for free. Of uh, Jeff Bezos' money, because you know he doesn't need it. And I mean, he might need it a little bit more now that Trump's pissed off at him than he did before. <laughs> but he still doesn't yeah, need it. He's not going to be hurt. He anymore. still doesn't need it nearly as much as we do. <laughs> he's, he's got repurposing rockets money. Like, I'm sure he's fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Hey, uh, so, so that's, that's our, our little spiel. Uh, Bob, won't you tell us uh, about you, your podcast, and um, why is it that you drink so much beer, Bob? Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, our show is should also it's called Have a Drink. We should also probably call it uh, Masquerading Our Alcohol Addiction. Um, <laughs> uh, too many letters, man. You can't put that that like iTunes freak freaks out when you got that many letters in there. Fair enough. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, we've uh, me and my co-hosts uh, Chris, Brittany, and Casey uh, do do a now weekly uh, weekly show of uh, uh, called Have a Drink. We talk about whatever. Uh, drink in uh, stuff we want to research that week. Basically, uh, it uh, can vary from so so whatever uh, al- whatever alcohol they have on sale at the old liquor barn. You guys are like, hey, we haven't done this one before, right? That's that's kind of how it goes. <laughs> uh, no, it's that's more of an afterthought. It's more of a <laughs> I've got this. It's more like, hey, we should talk about this. We go down the list, we pick it out, and then uh, we go blow too much money on on alcohol for the episode. Um, but no, it's uh, it's a fun thing. It's, it's we try to be very uh, informative, trying to to learn more about the stuff. The general idea was, it started out with uh, me, Chris, and Brittany, and we didn't know. Oh, pardon, we didn't know crap, dick all about drinks, about any kind of like actual stuff about alcohol. Uh, but we were interested and we wanted to learn more. So, so, so you, were you just reading the backs of the, of the bottles, and being like, hey, we can just read these online. Uh... <laughs> no, no. Uh, we we had like some stuff. Like we we were inspired by um, uh, the show. I think it was on like Mojo for some time, but ended up on Hulu, which is where we found it. Uh, Three Sheets with uh, Zane Lamprey, mm. and we went, man, this guy gets to go around the world and drink for a living. That sounds good, but how can we do that on a budget? <laughs> okay, we can't, but we can at least drink a lot and hang out on on <laughs> Skype. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Fitz, I show up for the beards. Yeah, uh, Chris is a very majestically bearded individual. Uh, but, uh, no, that's, we've been doing it for a few years now. This year we went to weekly. We've also added a new show because we're now addicted to making content too, I guess. That, that, that actually comes with, uh, you, you get the smallest smidgen of success as a podcaster and all of a sudden you just want to shit out all the content you possibly can. Yeah, like, uh, what, 74 it, shows. Yeah, 70, 74 shows. Uh, you want to host all of them, even if you're not <laughs> part of it. And, yeah, it's, it gets ridiculous pretty quick. Um, okay, so uh, how, much, uh, how, much, how much beer did you drink before this, and how, how, how has it changed your – because I know it's primarily beer, although you've done uh, some hard liquors, and you, you've even done tea and, and things like that. But, yeah. um, but how, how – like, like – your your beer palate because this is one of the things me and Ken talk about all the time is my beer palate is this big and his beer palate is basically like is like like a Saint Bernard you know just wants to lick everything. <laughs> um, how how has your beer palate expanded since you started this? Were you like into super danky hoppy beers when you started, or has oh, that, God, is that no. something that's developed over the course of the show? That that happened entirely because of the show. I was a stout guy. I would drink the darker the better, uh, and I would always just drink like the the. The, you know, if it poured out like you had, you know, like motor oil, I was like, yeah, that's about right. That's that's what I pull <laughs> and I put in my body. <laughs> um, but uh, over the course of the show, we would try, you know, we we kept trying new stuff, and people kept saying, no, you should really give these IPAs a chance. And 
uh, we found different gateway drugs essentially um uh, and eventually like grown into like oh I, like, I love this i love these uh you know i love this this super hoppy whatever um this this hazy hoppy east coast whatever you know there's now a biggie tupac fight of ipas going on but um <laughs> <laughs> there, yeah, there actually is. Yeah, there's an East Coast oh and a God. West Coast oh, IPA. Um, and then... Can't, um, can't totally miss me flashing gang signs up on the screen. Cool. <laughs> yeah, oh no, I, I saw it. I chose to ignore it. <laughs> ignore this one. Uh, so, <laughs> so, Bob, I got I to gotta ask you, you, you try a lot of different beers. Is there a way that, that you keep track of what you thought about different beers? Uh ideally i use untapped for that uh ah, but but i if tend only to get, i knew that pre-show <laughs> uh, i tend to end up drinking too much and uh forget to check into stuff so occasionally i'm completely surprised when i try things later um <laughs> yeah. so i i actually I, i've been enjoying reading your beer reviews because they they're interesting in the fact that they don't always describe anything about the beer itself nope and they're way easier to understand than mine <laughs> no we yeah. have a game of what the heck is amos drinking because we love his reviews <laughs> <laughs> yes I, so speaking of games i came up with a game and it is called which beer is this so bob okay. we know this seems you know beer but how well do you know the beers you know it's time to play Which Beer Is This, where I will read one of your beer reviews from Untapped, and you will tell us which beer you were talking about. This will there end total, poorly. <laughs> there, there are is that, is, that, of them. is that poorly, like P-O-U-R-L-Y? No, I wasn't <laughs> intending on a pun, but there it is. <laughs> and that just happened. Uh, all of these beers are from within the last year, so I'm not digging into the like super old archives. So you should have some memory of these he, he's are gone, you ready he, to play he's gone into the garage fridge but not the beer cellar <laughs> all right bob uh, so if you get one right you're gonna hear and if you get it wrong you're gonna hear okay so there's ten of them. Just now how, many, just how like... many take a guess before we begin how many out of ten do you think you're gonna get correct two two <laughs> Wow. Okay. All right. Well, let's see. All right. So this beer, you gave a 4.5 out of 5, and your review reads as follows. Almost sexually satisfied groan. Text to speech is oddly specific. <laughs> uh, um, what beer were you writing about there? I, re I remember writing that review. I can give I hints try, as well if you need a if hint. You, yeah, that might be helpful because I'm trying to limit it down between a couple of them, and I'm yeah. Right, if you can give me beer, a hint, this beer is an imperial stout. Imperial stout, um, which point, goes along with uh, the your flavor preference that you were describing earlier. Yeah. Oh, what have I had that's an imperial stout in the last? Uh, Problem is, my memory for what I'm drinking is terrible. Um, <laughs> Which is probably a common problem amongst people on Untapped. Fair, yeah, fair <laughs> enough. Um, All right, ten seconds. I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say KBS, even though that's not right. Nope, I, I will give you, I'll give you one extra hint. It's from Braxton. Oh, uh, then that's gonna be the. Um, uh, I'm gonna say. Dark charge with a starter. It it oh you're close. I'm uh, not gonna give this one to you because uh, you're not exactly right, and I gave you a shitload of hints. It is the 2017 Dark Charge S'mores. Oh okay, I couldn't remember if that was the one that had the 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 coffee or the 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 marshmallow flavor. Yeah, right. that. I'm trying to I, I can actually think of the night that was now. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, moving on to the next one. You gave this beer a 3.75, and you said subdued flavors, but tasty Berliner Weisse. Berliner Weisse. Um, 
Is it Blue Stallions Berliner Weiss? I can't remember what they call that. It is okay. Braxton Labs Pear Berliner Weiss. I just like when you get it wrong and it sounds like uh, it sounds like your brain literally shed itself because you're like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving on. Uh, 4.5 out of 5, you gave this beer. That label doesn't lie. This PA has just the right hint of citrus. Really glad Casey left me this. Oh, bollocks. <laughs> uh, that is That is something that I can't get my hands on, and I'm thinking it's from like, thinking it's from like, Louisiana or Georgia or something. It is um, a pale ale from Great Raft Brewing. And Casey uh, apparently left you some of it. Yeah. I or, or forgot it and you didn't I, want to blame him. I honestly can't remember the name of what that is. Um, <laughs> this is Commotion from Great Raft. Okay. Yeah, that was one that I was like, no, I'm not going to get because that came from that came from out of state. All right, oh. so this beer you gave a 3.25, and you said not worth the trouble it caused, but solid. <laughs> this is an IPA from Flying Dog. Not worth the trouble it caused from an IPA from Flying Dog. That. And it's a Belgian IPA, in fact. Okay. Vile says this um, game is making him want a very specific beer he can't get in his state. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is if it's from Flying Dog. That is. Oh, um, is that Raging Bitch? It is. It is. You get your first point. All right. To yeah. Keep the theme of IPAs from Flying Dog. We move on to the next one, which you gave a four out of five, and you said this drink filled my pleasantly drunk dreams last night. <clears throat> I might like your reviews better than mine. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely drinking better beer than I am. Um, oh, um, I don't, I can't remember the name of it. I think it might be their jalapeno something or other because they had some spicy something. <gasps> this is Snake Dog IPA. Oh, okay. Yeah. Don't recall that at all now. Hmm. Those dreams have faded from my brain. <clears throat> <laughs> All right, this American IPA from Sierra Nevada, you gave a 3.75 and said pretty good. Wait, hold on. I, I started the wrong one here. Okay, so American IPA from Sierra Nevada. Ken knows how to read. Four. Hey, you gave it a four and you said good start. Bit of an odd finish, but delicious. Um, Probably the, the Vegas uh, yeah. uh, description that you've given in this list. Okay. Um that could be uh, you see we had a whole we had a whole period of time where we were doing sampler packs and now I'm trying to remember if it's from any of those. And I don't remember the names of any of those beers. Uh okay. it was from that sampler pack because I believe that I tried this beer from a sample pack. <laughs> uh you give up? Yeah. No, I'm not gonna <laughs> This one is the tropical torpedo. <gasps> Oh, okay. Yeah. You All look right. like you just I got hit were... by a tropical tor torpedo. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We are getting close to the end now. We've got four left. This pale ale, American pale ale, in fact, from 2-3 Brewing Company, you gave a 3.75. You said, pretty good. I'm impressed by my homish town. Um, so it was a pale ale that... Mm, okay. That might it's probably something from West Sixth or it's from Pivot. From, it's from Two Three Brewing. Oh, two three. Okay. Now I don't remember who that is. Oh wait. Um it's from twenty three brewing. It's uh um Hey, you say two three, I say twenty three. Uh it's, it's the, the high it's the highway that runs through uh Prestonsburg. Um what is, what is that called? Um, That's what we're asking you, dude. I know, right? <laughs> and clearly, I'm succeeding, right? Uh, and three. Yep. I two, can't think of the name. One and that would be the mosaic 
pale ale. Okay. All right. Yeah. Right. So now we're moving into Matson beer. This Matson from Braxton, you gave a 3.75 and you said it was the first Matson of the year. That is, what do yeah. they call their <laughs> October fuel? That's what they call their. He, he that is correct. He didn't know where for to for find those that don't know what a Merzen is, uh, but you've heard of an Oktoberfest style beer, uh, they're one and the same. I part of my problem is I rarely keep drinking the same beer, so I'm trying to like run through so many beer names in my head, going, I don't know what this could be. Um, <sighs> all right, so wrapping up, we've got we got two left. Uh, mm -hmm. Both of these that I have left are both American style. Imperial Stouts. Okay. The first one here is from Founders, which you gave a five out of five. I'm sure you're going to get this one correct. You said shared by last of these with my D and D group. Always delicious. That's KBS. That is correct. <laughs> it's, there, there, there are two fives I've given, and untapped. One is KBS, and the other is El Coco. Yeah, for, so for those that don't know what KBS is, that's Kentucky Breakfast Stout from Founders. And oh my fucking God, it is one of the greatest things on this planet. They just uh, released it, and I could not get any of it this year. <laughs> that sucks so bad. Uh, if, you may, if it makes you feel any better, I did not get any either. Uh, <laughs> uh, all right, so the final beer on this list. Oh, go ahead, Amos. I was just going to say, you don't get a lot of anything, though. Yeah, well... well. You're, you're in a you're in a partial drought state. <laughs> Correct. That's uh yeah. I'm in one of the the worst states in the union for for getting beers in, one, in New Mexico. One of the worst cities in one of the worst states <laughs> in the country. Yeah. To get I can't, yeah, I can't say you're wrong. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right, Bob, for your final beer, this American American style imperial stout from Stone Brewing this time. You gave a 4.5, which is a pretty damn good score as well. And you said a friend had some aged stuff sitting around. It's pretty damn great. Uh, okay. And you wrote this review nearly a year ago. Yeah. And I'm going to give you a hint. The name, the word stone is in the name. Uh, <laughs> oh wait! Because uh, the name is, is, is this brewing. the the is this the the uh, Wheaton Farkin Woot Stout? Uh, the, is, the Stone collab with it is the Woot Stout 2.0. So I'm gonna give it to you because it, it is in fact that, but the this is not the one that has the Wheaton collab. Blah 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 in the name of it. Okay. This is the Woot Stout 2.0. So I'm going to give it to you. You ended up with four out of ten, sir. Double what you had predicted. Yeah. So you were wrong. Well, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So <laughs> much like I was for most of this. <laughs> uh, that was that was fun. That was it was really oh, yeah. fun going through your old reviews and just seeing how non-descriptive they were. <laughs> oh, like I like to describe not the beer, but how I'm feeling drinking the beer. That's yeah. Well, you're actually better off than I am because most of my reviews of late have read RMP pre-show, <laughs> which.tv <laughs> slash virtual misery. <laughs> uh, that's, that's pretty much the standard thing these days. That's, 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 I don't, I don't, I don't know if that's necessarily effective <sighs> and I don't know if uh, there should be an effective or an effective. I'm not sure, but both of them, either one, I don't think either one of them work. <laughs> so, <laughs> Oh my gosh! So, all right. So you you were talking about the origins of Have a Drink Show, um, and then you started to talk about how you guys do a weekly show, actually two shows per week. Yeah. Right. Um, tell us a little bit about where you see the show going, and like what sort of um, uh, like maybe maybe upcoming special shows, uh, special event type things. Uh, just whatever you can, whatever you see in the crystal ball when you look at Have a Drink Show. Uh, I mean, going forward, we're hoping to have more, more meetups, uh, with, you know, people, uh, trying to, to see if we can get a group of, of some of our, 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 you know, 
regular listeners together in some way. Uh, we're not quite sure on how to do that. We we are trying to do just some some regular just hangouts, uh, either through Discord or uh, something to you know for for patron rewards for for our stuff. If you go to patreon.com slash have a drink show. I was wondering when that was going to come out. Like, I, I yeah, know. hell yeah. <laughs> I was trying to think. Is I was like, is it is it show? Let's hope I'm right. It's always show, uh, right? <laughs> <laughs> almost always. Um, but the, 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 you know, I know we've got a few things uh, coming down the pipeline. One has to get finished in the next few days because I have to finish writing uh, a big history episode on uh, whiskey and rum rebellion. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, that so, is something that you do with your show, your main show that we don't do, uh, is you script a lot of it. Like, there's a lot of conversation in the beginning, but then you start breaking down, like, what's going on with the beer and how it's made and things like that. It's, it, it's yeah, it's helpful because a lot of us don't know anything about it. And it's, it's, sometimes it's, it's like we will, we will write it for other people. And then one of us reads that section and goes, oh, I didn't actually know that. Yeah. Yeah, it, yeah, it's really great when uh, when when you have a really good first half of the show and it's a it's a really good beer and you can hear um, you can hear Chris popping a lot of beers because <laughs> then he starts reading his parts and it's just like complete shit. Like he's he, oh, I can't I can't read this as, as Chris does. <laughs> well, it's 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 less his his fault, more of the there are a lot of words that are not English that we have to read and it's. <laughs> <laughs> it's not easy, and I I can't do it either. But, um, but yeah, but you're the you're the history buff of yeah of the uh, the group, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's. <laughs> I mean, I figured I have to put that degree to you somehow. Uh, so every so often, I, I I dive deep into something. Uh, the first time I did it was Prohibition, which was a three episode long drunken binge uh we learned after that maybe not do all of those at once <laughs> first uh, first yeah, two were quite... fine first two were fine you get to episode three and it's like oh they are they they can't even read <laughs> they, they should have prohibited themselves an episode ago <laughs> oh yeah so yeah because you guys did that all in one session right the, yeah uh Oh, well, yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, that is quite the fun listen. And, and it, I can I can confirm that it is patreon.com slash have a drink show. Awesome. Good. As is in uh, the uh, chat room now. Yeah, uh, we we do end up having to script a lot of our stuff. It's it's it does tend to help uh, keep us focused because occasionally, if we're left to ramble, we will go way too long. Uh, we we have a problem, and that problem is we bullshit together pretty well. <laughs> yeah, that was uh, Amos. At one time, we we were like that on RMP. We'd have like two and a half hour long episodes. And uh, remember, remember when we had to we had to break out a timer? Like we had to set a, a sixty minute timer and watch it mm. because otherwise we would go way past. Well, what what happened was I got tired of editing a three hour phone call down to a one hour show and I was like this is yeah this isn't working for me. <laughs> yeah. What I feel bad when I look like I try to occasionally when we're recording look look down at the clock and go, Oh Brittany's gonna get real mad. because uh, <laughs> she is usually ends up as the one that, that edits everything. Um mm. but yeah, Brittany edits stuff. Uh, Chris kind of helps with most of the news side. Uh, Casey has a lot of knowledge on drinks, and I'm the drunken monkey that dances on the show. <laughs> uh, but at least you all have your roles, right? Well established, uh, hard set roles. Yeah. Now we we talked about Untapped a while ago. Um, I hear a couple of your 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 co members of the podcast are going to be able to do some some fun Untapped stuff here shortly. Yeah, they are going to talk with um, uh, the one of the co-founders. I'm not sure which one. I'm trying to look at the text message uh, that I was sent <laughs> that said, "Hey, we're because they're going to be on uh, a, a sounds weird local podcast, uh, the Cincy mm-hmm. Brewcast. Uh, they uh, it's all focused on Cincinnati beer." culture uh, and all the breweries that are around there uh but in like basically next week um they're going to be talking with uh 
Uh, can't find the name, uh, but he's one of the <laughs> co-founders of Untapped. Um, that's that's pretty awesome. Yeah, no. Um, so that's we were trying to decide who gets to go, and uh, I can't travel up to Cincinnati for it. Uh, and Casey is further away than me, so I think he's out. He also may or may not be on a boat. We're not sure. And <laughs> so I'm. We're. It's looking like it's probably going to be Chris and Chris and Brittany heading down for that one. Uh, but that 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 should be real fun. I'm I'm looking forward to getting to hear to getting to hear that one. Uh, hopefully they record it. Hopefully, hopefully they get a chance to do an actual like interview and. and oh yeah, it, it uh, the Cincy Brewcast does a whole lot of like interview stuff, so they're going to be probably there with the host doing some interview questions. So we'll uh, fingers crossed that goes well. That's awesome. That's really awesome. And fingers crossed yeah. we don't end up banned from Untapped. <laughs> <laughs> right. How awesome would it be? No, that's pretty to, great. To, how awesome I, would it be to get like your own badge? Have, to finally, get a meetup and have a badge for that meetup. I'm just saying. Oh like, my cool. God! Can you imagine just, having a have a drink show bad? I'm, I'm just verbal vomiting right now, just throwing ideas out there. Oh, just dude. saying. I all I know is like we have to find some way for them to pay Lynn Peralta because he draws all of our art. <laughs> <laughs> that would oh well, may, maybe maybe they'll tell you that if you, you you give them the art, they'll put it up as a badge. Well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah this, this still this still works. Um, yeah. and, and of course, you can support Lynn Peralta at Patreon.com/slash Lynn. <laughs> Um, well, uh, if, if, uh, what's your elevator speech? Like if, if say someone is not into drinking, cause I mean, I, I, I assume that if they're, if they're into drinking, they're already listening to your show because why the hell wouldn't they? But That's if they're right. not into drinking, if they're not into alcoholic beverages, why would they listen to your show? Uh, I'm trying to think of the best way to word that quickly. Uh, if, if you're into, to learning about the world, learning about how, how alcohol has shaped large chunks of the world, uh, learning more about weird trivia, uh, about, about drinks, about cocktails, about things that have helped shape our society, then give us a listen. We, we love to talk about that kind of stuff. Love to talk about how it's made. And, uh, you know, just in general, the passion for, for what does this, even if you don't necessarily drink, we like to just, exp you know, it's interesting to explore someone's passion. Hmm. So this is ours. I would have said if you'd like to see a random dude get drunk and, and uh, a, a, a lady that is not your wife uh, stare at you through a camera like you should die, <laughs> uh, then you could stop by and watch the Have a Drink show. And towards the end of it, you're guaranteed to see at least one of the dudes a little more drunk than they planned on being. And Brittany looking at somebody like she wants them to die because they won't shut up. That's that. That's that would have been my elevator pitch. That's. I mean, probably. Wow. That's also that's fair. That's an interpretation. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure Brittany's gonna kill I like me after Bob's that. Pitch better. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> it's, it's, uh, you know, uh, sometimes sometimes the raw emotion gets through. I've actually had time to think about mine. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, that's hey, fantastic. Um, have a drink show is incredibly entertaining. I was so glad to have basically stumbled across you guys <laughs> uh what a year and a half ago and um yeah man i i've loved watching you guys ever since it's been and, it's uh, been a help let's not forget our little impromptu party over at, well i say impromptu but we all brought beers so it couldn't have been too impromptu at nerdtacular uh, yes <laughs> our 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 unofficial let's smuggle beer into utah party <laughs> <laughs> there's no proof of that anymore no, not anymore. <laughs> that was a lot of beer. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. I, I, I drank till my palate couldn't do it anymore, and then I drank a couple more, and then my brain couldn't do it anymore, and I still had to stumble back up the fucking mountain. Uh, <laughs> yeah. At least yeah. you didn't fall off. <sighs> it's true. Um, yeah. Yeah. Hey, uh, something happened to me this week that I wanted to share with everybody because I think it is just absolutely amazing. Wow. Did, uh, did your nuts drop? <laughs> no. Did uh did you grow hair on your chest? No. <laughs> um, I don't know. Uh, that, those are about the uh, most amazing things I can think of. Um, uh, what you have what a very, you have a very strange sense of reality, dude. Like <laughs> worrying about a forty year old's nuts dropping. That's I, I'm not sure that puts you into the uh, the 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 social <laughs> elite by any means. Um, no, I got a phone call this week from my cable company, and of course, I immediately assumed that uh, we caught you pirating, which I don't. I don't pirate anything, so that really pissed me off. 
or <laughs> we've noticed that you uh, go over our, our our estimate of what you should be using every month, which would have just pissed me off and told me uh, I would have just told them to screw off because it's an unlimited plan. <laughs> right. Um, no, they called me to tell me my cable modem is out of date and they have an updated model um, that will give me faster speeds available for free uh, and they will come by and deliver it and take my old one away. When I told them well, I, that doesn't work for me because my house is under weird hours, uh, can I drop by and drop it off and swap it out? And they're like, yeah, no problem. My cable what? company will proactively is I- improving my customer experience. Which cable company that, is this? Because that doesn't sound like a cable company I've ever heard yeah, of. Yeah, right. This sounds fifty. <laughs> like, like I'm, I'm totally gonna film the altercation when I go into the, into the, the little GCI thing. And I, I'll take my new cable modem, and they totally shut it down. Like, who the, what the hell? No, that was a prank phone call. I'm gonna record <laughs> it because that's, that's what's gonna happen. But I can't not. Why? Because I'm a damn nerd and I like my internet. Um. So yeah, Did that, you say internet. 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, um that's amazing dude can, my, my can you, you your your company lets you have uh, an over outdated one for like a year and a half until you finally called up and started yelling about the speeds one day before they said oh you should uh you should get a new one yeah no you yeah you you should have been getting these other speeds like we upgraded <laughs> that like eight months ago <laughs> thanks dicks like why didn't you upgrade mine <laughs> Like I'm still getting like 800 down, uh, 600 up right now, and they're like, "Oh, you you need a new modem. This one's this one's better. That one sucks." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I God can't damn. I, I can't is... help but think that my my account is flagged from all the time I harassed them on Twitter. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're in danger of losing this customer. Uh, let's, quick, quick, do something cool for him. Well, every time I'd post, uh, uh, I'd get like a bunch of people like sending me DMs and shit. Like, oh my God, yeah, they they suck so bad. Like. You want to sign a petition? I'm like, no, I just I just blast them on Twitter. I mean, <laughs> no, yeah. I just wanted to complain. It felt good. Yeah, <laughs> they really did. Get a bitch about them on the internet. Yeah, it, I mean, it worked. We got our fucking unlimited access, uh, unlimited on the top tier. So there you go. Uh, How are you gonna cap people? You give them a one terabyte a month. Like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> either 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 they don't need anywhere near that, or they need way more than that. There's nobody that's gonna be like, oh man, perfect plan for me would be one terabyte. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be that'd be fantastic. <laughs> uh, what, what what's your cap, Kent? Uh, cap? Uh, I don't have one. Oh oh oh! Uh, what what speeds are you working on here? I've got a hundred down, fifty up, I think. So not great, but uh, not bad either. Hmm. Like it's a very functional, serviceable connection. Yeah, see, that's the difference between us. How about you, Bob? Well, there may or may not have been shenanigans, and I don't know what we just upgraded ours to for <laughs> technically nothing. Um, I'd have to ask my roommate. He may or may not know someone. <laughs> they, I, I totally we have not been anybody. paying intro starter prices for like three years. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, yeah. So by the way, uh, uh, Mr. Tom Smith, who is our guest yeah. from uh, uh, well, Cran- uh, Scranton, Ohio, uh, b- b- this is really something you shouldn't see on the internet, which is why you should be fine saying it here. Because no, I mean, everybody that watches, um, everybody that listens to the show is in the chat room right now, like yelling at you, like, "Oh yeah, me too, dude." Well, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're, we've said Bob enough. They're probably confused. Mm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I just I can't uh, I can't do the the. The, the other name is just weird to me. Oh, no, no, it's fine. I Honestly, I had like four or five different nicknames growing up. Uh, so I'm used to different groups of people calling me different things. So mm. I, I just like whatever is comfortable for whatever, like, I will I will respond. Uh, Fitz, uh, Fitz says he's always confused and he's always, uh, he's, he's still doing the intro thing as well. So you got a uh, compatriot in arms uh, fighting, the, fighting the good fight. <laughs> Um, so, there, so this is not the first time this week the three of us, well, in the last yes. week, that the three of us have all been on a Skype call together. It's not. It is not. Uh, Kent, do you have a link to that? Oh, we don't, we don't have like a list, do we? We still haven't gotten a list. We were all part of the Diamond Club B-Team movie draft uh, that was, I believe, originally in, in, incepted by me, Kent, and Jackie really, really late one night after about a six-pack each. But never uh, put into yeah, motion. Like a really long time ago. Yeah, yeah. I've never. Uh, 
<laughs> never never actually did anything with it. We were just like, yeah, I remember that time we were talking about doing a second movie draft and we were really hammered. Yeah. Whatever came of that, I don't know. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Absolutely yeah. nothing. Um, however, W. Scottis One didn't uh, didn't didn't fail on that front and got us all together and we did a movie draft and that was pretty awesome. I wish I could show you some stats. Hopefully next week we will have some uh, some movie draft minute for the B team movie draft um, narrated by Big Voice J. I think yeah, the uh, only I see. I think the only movie that's out so far for that is Ready Player One, Ready right? Hill. Yeah. Correct. Yes, and uh, Ready Player One is actually owned by Game Night. Uh, so mm -hmm. Willie's team, uh, Willie and Wabbit, own uh, that team mm -hmm. in uh, Ready Player One. So they're the only ones that are actually on the board right now. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I don't have any stats per se. But I do have the list of movies that Ritual Misery owns. Yeah. Uh, we we were able to draft A Quiet Place. Rampage, mm -hmm. Life of the Party, mm -hmm. Hotel Transylvania 3, mm. and Mission Impossible Fallout. Mm. So, so I just realized watching one of the trailers for, for Ready Player One is Rampage, and I just realized it was a movie based on a video game. Yes. Um, and I also, watching that trailer, didn't realize it till like the last 30 seconds. Wow. Because I'm like, <sighs> okay, it's just a, just a big white monkey. And at the end I go, Oh, oh, it's Rampage. You know, it's not just yeah, a big white exactly. monkey. Exactly. They should, I, I think they're marketing this movie all wrong because obviously they want gamers, like old school gamers, to go see this movie. They need to make it abundantly obvious that it's Rampage from fucking Sega Genesis and show like gameplay footage for three or four seconds and then switch to the live action to show that this is in fact. <clears throat> Rampage. What what if what if, it what some, if they were I thought it was some sort of Mighty Joe Young follow up with yes! The Rock? <laughs> exactly. what, what, what if they were showing the game, right? And like the big the, the the gorilla or whatever reaches in and grabs one of the people, you know, and like comes out and starts squishing it and then throws it and, and the act of throwing it actually cuts it blends into the cutscene of the movie. Oh, I mean, that would be or, or if, if like uh, one of the buildings starts falling, it was like, <laughs> and as it's falling down, the camera kind of like pans over it and it blends into the movie and comes up on the other side of the movie, uh, other side of where the building was and just shows the dust settling and shows the, the big ape right there with like the rock, like looking at him like, what? Yes. <laughs> I, yeah, I should exactly be a, I should better. be a fucking director. Uh, God damn it. See this? <laughs> I've missed my calling in life. I should be a trailer should director. Be. Is that a yeah, thing? you should be marketing. Um, is it, uh, yeah, oh, I don't think that's a thing. Uh, um. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> Bob, do, do you remember the movies that you guys drafted? Because if you um, don't, I've got them right here. I would say, yeah, <laughs> I don't have the list of them uh, in front of me. If you've, if you've got them, I only remember like two or three of them. Yeah, you guys got I Feel Pretty, Super Troopers 2, Avengers Infinity War, and Crazy Rich Asians. Look, so I thought we got Infinity list. War for a song. <laughs> Until, yes. yeah, until the end of that draft, and then I went, Whew, well, maybe we'll get finish a strong second." <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, that's uh, absolutely amazing that you got Infinity War because I think that is going to be the movie of the summer, um, both in quality and actual dollars earned. Uh, but but you guys got Crazy Rich Asians, like <laughs> yeah, we're we're counting on it to be a. Um, what was that? Like a bridesmaids kind of sleeper. Yeah, I, I don't know, man. I uh, I heard I good don't things, know. and I watched the trailer. Okay. I haven't seen like any hot garbage. Yeah, I haven't <laughs> seen anything about it. Casey was telling me when I came in. I, I I've had like I had time to do zero research, and he was like, "It's like yeah, no, I think it's probably supposed to become like the the buzz is supposed to be some kind of sleeper hit," and I almost want to go. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, like the buzz doesn't mean anything, but you know, we'll, we'll see where it goes. Um, the, the only thing I think we overpaid for was, uh, well, really overpaid for was uh super troopers to which I was like, no, I, I feel okay getting that anyway. That was, that was very, so, you know, I really loved the first yeah. one. So I'm, I'm okay. Yeah, with exactly. That. I'm, I'm personally very much looking forward to seeing super troopers too. That's, Man, I've been I, waiting. We've been waiting what a decade, over a decade, like fifteen yeah. years or something, for something the like that. Yeah, I, I've, I'm super pumped to actually. I was super pumped to actually get to play in a movie draft because I used to run 
individual movie drafts with friends of mine. Like after seeing it from like Nine Attack and all that, mm. I, uh, I, you know, Chris, Brittany, Casey, and some other friends of ours, like, all right, we're gonna, you will have a league. I will be commissioner. I've never actually Played. gotten to bid. Yeah, yeah. It, it, yeah. I, I will admit, it, it, I can see why having done a few of these, people start having better luck at them because it's it's definitely an acquired skill. It's it's a skill that you have to work at because we learned a shit ton just from the three hours we put into it and then the the miserable list we have of movies. Yeah, the, yeah. Yeah. Well, and the other part, I, I, so Casey was crunching math beforehand, and I was going off of essentially years of listening to my father pick movies for the movie theaters that he was managing mm. to, to, to get, you know, shown up. So I'm like, all right, let's just hope that maybe I'm as lucky as... Well, one of those theaters shut down, so maybe not. Maybe more lucky. Hmm. Hey, uh, yeah. <clears throat> we all listen to podcasts here. We're all podcasters. Uh, my, I, I just got a text from uh, from from one of my coworkers, and I I, I I tweeted it out because it's pretty amazing, and I'm going to share it with you guys now. Um, okay. Can go ahead and explain without using the words. Explain what the what you see in the picture that I'm showing right now. Okay. Um. I I see a. a Boy, looks like he's, uh, I don't know, 12, somewhere between like 12, 14 years old. Mm -hmm. uh, appears to be eating like a bowl of cereal, watching television. Mm. Uh, uh, more to the point, watching uh, young girl. I say young girls, like young ladies, like teenage girls eating ice cream. On the TV. So in, so in retrospect, I think the boy might be eating ice cream instead of a bowl of cereal. Okay, okay. Um yeah, that's that's pretty much what I get from it. And then uh, the 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 words at the top, and I'm I'm going to share this with the video viewers at the same time that I uh, that that you read it out, Kent. But I want you to go ahead and read what it says. <sighs> okay. It uh, so at the top it says how it feels to listen to podcasts. <laughs> um, it's a, it's a single single individual somewhere between the ages of fifteen and thirty seven. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> and, and staring I, at a staring at a static image. Yeah, I think it's actually like a poster, like a like a large yeah, poster, a poster taped to the wall that they're sitting yeah. next to enjoying ice cream with like whoever whoever these these young ladies are presumably uh, uh, celebrities of some sort eating ice cream. Uh, like they're eating yeah, ice cream with a, their celebrities, but not not it's really. It's actually a it's an advertisement for for creme helado, which I'm assuming is a, a uh, like Spanish uh, ice cream yeah. brand. Um, man, all I can think of right now is like, yeah, no, that's that's that feels right because it's a there's a lot of like one way friendship going on. Listening to it. <laughs> like you listen to a thing and you're like, yeah. I know these people. They don't know you. The, the the kid sitting there might actually be talking to the poster right now. Like, yeah, it's entirely <laughs> possible. He's very much enjoying um, having ice cream. Very very, very engaged with his poster. Yes. <laughs> Oh, uh, and not in the same way that Kent was engaged with his posters when he was young. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> oh, I was like, nope, just going to let that one sit there. Just <laughs> okay. So, uh, so, all right. So we did, the, we did the B team diamond club B team movie draft, but we are by, we, I mean the B team are not overly thrilled with the name diamond club B team and we want your help in figuring out what we should be called instead of B team. And by B team, this is the Diamond Club shows that are not what we call the A team, like Brian, Justin, Tom, uh, you know, the, the the big timers, right? The reason, the whole reason that we're in Diamond Club in the first place. Mm. Uh, so it's it's us. It's the Have a Drink show. It is Walking Drunk. It is Geek Grills. It is Movie Party Game Night. And uh, those are the teams that we have for the draft, but there are several other uh, podcasts that are are part of the Diamond Club B team. And um, big, you know, we, big we, news we coming are out you for guys, that. basically. The, the fans of Diamond Club shows are the podcasters of the B team, right? Yeah. So uh, help us come up with a better name than B team uh, for for the B team. <laughs> so, uh, uh, you, you know where that B team name came from? Uh, because I ran out of thoughts when I was building up the Slack like two years ago. 
So (laughs) I remember that. Be better than me. Come up with a better name. Podcast at ritualmisery.com. Let us know what it is or tweet us at ritual misery. Either one of those will work. Hey, um, this is the part of the show where we like to give a, a, a shout out before we uh, before we send our guest on their way. We like to give a shout out to one of our other B team uh, uh, shows. Um, and this week we are going to give a shout out to the Have a Drink show. Uh, Bob, have you ever heard about these guys? No, never heard of them. Okay, so uh, seem like seem like <clears throat> real dicks. Yeah, uh, well, uh, well, three of them are. Uh, one's really nice. Uh, 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 That's Brittany. R- right, right. <laughs> um, uh, so you so you have heard of them, okay? Uh, basically, they they talk about all kinds of uh, different drinks, usually alcoholic, but not always. And they don't just uh, talk about the drinks itself, although they do drink during the show and rate their drinks and, and kind of give impressions of these different drinks, usually under a, a central theme. But they also break down the history of of the, that particular drink, or um, either the history of it, or how it's made, or sometimes a mixture of both. But it's a really awesome show, and if you're into alcohol, if you're into drinking, and everybody's into drinking something, they haven't reviewed water yet, but I'm sure they'll get there eventually. And it's actually on the list. See, it's, it, there you go. And uh, cruise on by haveadrinkshow.com uh, or um, uh, twitch.tv slash haveadrinkshow on Saturday evenings for most of us, afternoon for the, for the Easties. And uh, catch the news show about, about uh, your favorite alcohol and then learn about some other alcohols and... Uh, if you if you can do that and stay sober that entire time, you're a better person than I. <gasps> oh, and me. Um, okay, Bob. So tell us uh, tell us how people can find you now. That we've uh, pimped out the Have a Drink Show uh, group for um, a while. You can find me on uh, Twitter, uh, JK Fraser uh, at JK Fraser. Uh, my untapped handle is Bob of Thunder, I believe. Just one mm-hmm. word, no mm-hmm. you and Thunder, uh, because. I don't know. It was a dumb typo. <laughs> but I'm stuck with it, so here we are. <laughs> Oops. Um, Read drunk when you untap. Yeah. <laughs> no, I just, I like sausage thumbs. <laughs> Fair enough. I sent my mom a text earlier today, and I did it all by the little Google keyboard, the little swipe like Google keyboard. And I was in a hurry, so I didn't bother like rechecking it. And then after I sent it, I sent her another text, and I went up and looked at it. And there were like five spelling mistakes in in this you know thirty words or whatever that completely destroyed all recognition of what the message was supposed to say. I didn't understand it. It took me effort to reconstruct what I was trying to say, and I had just texted it a few moments before. Like autocorrect killed wow. that message dead. Yeah, uh, that's yeah. So I am rm underscore del noche on Twitter. I am del noche on Untapped. And if you're curious about me beyond that, uh, first of all, what's wrong with you? But otherwise, search me either Del Noche or Del Noche 77, pretty much all the places. Hmm. What about you, Amos? Uh, well, unlike Bob here, I don't have so many names that I can't keep track. Um, well. I, I, I just have three. So you can find me on Twitter at Ethan Kane, E-T-H-A-N-C-A-I-N-E. I don't know why I like spelling that out so much. Um, and uh, you can find the show at Ritual Misery, R I T U A L M I S E R Y. That that's because it actually sounds like Mickey Mouse. Um, yeah, I was gonna say R I T R I T U A L M I or M I S E R Y. Yeah. Uh, and by the way, I got my Disney. I picked up my Disney World tickets today, so it's it's a fact. We are definitely going for five days. Ooh. Um, Achievement locked. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Exactly. And you can follow the show. Uh, at Rich Misery, like I said, you can follow the show on the uh, on the website, richmisery.com. You can go by their subreddit. Man, there's too many of these little things. We're, t- we're sending people to too many places. Fuck all that. Don't worry about any of that shit right there. Just go to richmisery.com. Everything's there. Everything links there. Ritualmisery.com. Um, and then, of course, you can find us live uh, at ritualmisery.com slash live. There's a link there. Or you can go by twitch.tv slash, ri- slash ritualmisery. Um, Thursdays at 7 p.m. Pacific. Right? Correct. Oh. That is correct. I'm not reading it, so I had to guess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's it's 8 o'clock p.m. What, what, in the, only, do, uh, in the uh, only time zone that matters. Not. Um, uh, thank you so much to Kevin McLeod for allowing us to use your music. And uh, thank you for listening. For Kent, for Bob, uh, slash uh, Justin, slash whoever, uh, and me, this has been your Ritual Misery Podcast. See ya.
I just want to say horde side. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>